If you want to start using Vim as a code editor, it can be pretty hard to switch to Vim after you've used something like VS Code. Just because with VS Code you get so pampered with so many features that you really start to miss them inside Vim. But in this video I'll show you how to take uh, the most useful features in VS Code, at least to me. These are the ones that I use the most. And basically how to replicate them in Vim. Now this is not going to be a video where I teach you how to completely make your Vim like VS Code a uh, one-to-one -one comparison. I'm not going to go over how to add every single feature possible to Vim, but just the ones that I find the most useful and that I miss the most from VS Code. Alright, so let's start with some keyboard shortcuts. So one really useful keyboard shortcut that I found in Visual Studio Code is just the ability to move these lines around with just the Alt key. So right now I'm holding out Alt and just moving this line around. You can move it wherever you want. And you can also uh, copy the line down if you hold Control shift alt I don't know, the keyboard shortcuts might be a little bit different for you, but you can just copy this as many times as you want, move it around, and that's pretty useful. I know you can do kind of the same thing with Vim. You would just copy the line like so and just paste it a bunch of times. And I know you can delete it and then paste it somewhere else. But if you specifically miss the keyboard shortcuts, from Visual Studio Code, then you can add this to your VimRC. And excuse the mess in my VimRC, but what you want right here are these commands right here. And so what you can now do is just do Alt, J, and K to switch the lines around like VS Code. And what these commands are doing right here is you are able to control Alt, J, and K to copy up and down. And then finally, you're also able to do this in visual mode, so we can copy two of these and then go Alt, J, and K to move these around. So if you want the exact same functionality, you would just copy and paste these. I'll have a link to my VimRC in the description, but I didn't actually make these commands myself, uh, so I can't actually tell you what these are doing. I just copy and pasted this from a website. Maybe I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But you would just put these in, and then you can have exactly the same functionality that you would in VS Code. And another very useful feature is being able to have multiple cursors. So in VS Code, you can click around, uh, you can hold down Alt and click in different locations, and that will create multiple cursors for you. And you can then go and replace words with something here. Now if you want, there are Vim plugins that actually do give you multiple cursors, but that's not what I'm gonna go over in this video. I think for the most part you don't really need multiple cursors in Vim just because there are different ways to do things. So I'm not going to go over every possible example here, but let me go over a couple. So let's say I want to change these variable declarations right here to const instead of var. And so you would push control V to enter visual block mode. So if you're not aware, you can navigate around and select things like you normally would in visual mode. But in visual block mode you can select multiple rows at once and hit C to change. Then you can replace these with whatever you want. Let's say const, hit escape, and now it has inserted it down here as well. So in a way, you can have multiple cursors that way. You can also highlight these with visual block mode and hit shift I, and then you can insert something at the beginning of these statements. We can just put something here, push escape, and something has appeared on both lines. And you can hit uh, shift A to insert after one more time okay so you can now have kind of something like multiple cursors in vim and another nice multiple cursor feature is the ability to select one of these words and then hit Control d and you go over every single instance of that word in here and then you can just replace it with something else i actually don't like that it's case insensitive and it also grabs these as well but let's just replace these with a different word that's a pretty easy way to go over and change a whole bunch of things at once. You just hit Control D and it selects all these for you. And you can do almost the same thing in Vim. So all you would do is go over here and then first search for the word that you want to replace. So let's say emoji. And Vim is case sensitive, which I prefer actually. And so once you're at this word, you would type CGN. And it's going to change this word with whatever you want. Let's type symbol. And then what you can do after that is you can press period and it will just go through and change every single word that it finds. So that's basically the same functionality that you would get from VS Code. 
If you use Vim, you probably know that period just uh, replicates the last action you took. So basically you're just changing one of the words or you're finding and changing one of the words and then just doing the same to all the other words. So again, you would just search symbol, enter CGN, emoji, escape, period, 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 change all those. So that's most of what I use multiple cursors for. Again, if you want more fine grain control, there are actual plugins that will help you do that. But just these native Vim commands are enough for me for all of my use cases at least. All right, and next let's talk about a few plugins. So one really nice feature of Visual Studio Code is that it automatically has syntax highlighting for every single language. So you don't have to install any syntax highlighter unless you're using some obscure language. Most of the time you just open your document and it highlights it correctly. And you can do that in Vim as well with this plugin called, let's see, Vim Polyglot. And basically you just install this and you get all these language packs in one. So pretty much any possible language that you would actually want to use is in here. And all you have to do to configure this is install it with your plugin manager. I do have a video on how to do this if you are not as experienced with installing plugins. I use the plugin manager Vim Plug to do so. So check that video out if you don't know how to but you install it and there's basically no other configuration to do. Vim Polyglot will automatically grab all these different uh, syntax highlighters and it will only load them when you actually need them so you're not loading all of these language packs every time you start up Vim. That would be pretty slow. And next up we can install a plugin just to automatically close your HTML tags. So in Visual Studio Code, it will automatically close your tag for you. That's a little bit nice if you're working with a lot of HTML. And of course, there is a Vim extension that will do the exact same thing. It is called Vim Close Tag is the one I use. There's plenty of them, but this is the one I like. And again, this is just going to be as simple as installing the plugin with your plugin manager. There's not really any other configuration that I had to do to this. But if you're working with something like React.js and you want to have uh, self-closing tags inside your JavaScript, then you can add this line to your vimrc in order to parse jsx files as well for your react code just as an example okay next up let's talk about colors for example in your css it can be useful to see what color it actually looks like you have the hex value but you're not really sure what it looks like just looking at it so visual studio code gives you a preview of the color to the left of it and you can also download this with a plugin called vim hexokinase however you say that. And you can get something very similar to Visual Studio Code if you prefer having the colors on the side here. I actually prefer having the color in the background. It's a little bit easier to see at a glance. But if you do want to change how this is displayed, there is a setting. Let me find this in my VimRC. So by default, it's going to be virtual right here. Let me just save this and then restart this. So if you want to change how the colors are displayed, I have it set to be the background, but you can change it here. There's plenty of different settings. Virtual is gonna be the most similar to VS Code. You can put it on the left side. You can just change the color of the text if you want, or you can do background like I like to have. But there's plenty of different options there, so you can customize it as much as you want. And with this setting right here, you can change it to only display on these types of files specifically, only CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Just because whenever I type white in a markdown document, I don't really want the color to be shown. I already know what white is. So it's really only useful whenever you're coding. That's why I have these settings here. And next let's talk about Emmet. So Emmet is a really useful thing that you can use in Visual Studio Code or in Visual Studio Code it's already included. But you can type out some short snippet and then have it convert to HTML. Let's say we want five divs in a row so we can type div times five and then hit tab and we get all these divs right here and you can get some other snippets for example if you want just a basic html boilerplate you can type exclamation point dash and it gives you this really nice boilerplate right here so this has saved me a whole bunch of time in writing html otherwise it kind of takes forever and in vim we can do the same with the plugin emmet vim of course you can install it like the other ones and then by default, how you toggle it is you would type this, go to normal mode, and then it's control Y and then comma, which is kind of a really weird key binding. So personally, I change it. Well, let's go to my VimRC. And you can set the leader key for your Emmet to something else. I set it to comma. So whenever I type something out, I just 
highlight it and hit comma twice and then it expands the snippet. So let's do something like div times six and hit comma twice and we get six divs as you would expect. I do have a whole nother video on Emmet if you want to learn more. And then finally, one of the nicest features that Visual Studio Code has is its IntelliSense. So when you're working in some programming language, it's probably going to know already what you're going to type. Maybe I want to add use reducer here and it already knows what I'm going to do because of Visual Studio Code's IntelliSense for JavaScript. So whenever I type something out, it's automatically going to help me by assuming what I want. Then I would just hit enter and we have this right here. And it'll also help me correct any issues that my code might have. So let's say I misspelled this by accident. It's gonna have a red highlight under here. I can mouse over it and see what's wrong. Okay, I misspelled this. And you can actually get the exact same IntelliSense in Visual Studio Code using this plugin called COC. And what this plugin does is it actually gets the IntelliSense from Visual Studio Code and just translates it into something that Vim can read. And so you would start just by installing this plugin, coc.nvim, and then you would just install all the packs for the languages that you actually need. Let me go to the wiki so you can see all the language servers. So it's got all of these different languages right here. So you would just go through and install the ones that you want. Let's say I want JavaScript and TypeScript support. So you would use COC TS server. And you can do that by going into your vimrc and then setting this uh, COC global extensions command right here. And you would just put in all the different libraries or language packs that you wanted to use. So I want IntelliSense for HTML, CSS, JSON, JavaScript, and just some bonus snippets. And of course, you can go to this page on the wiki and see which ones you would all personally need. And once you put in all these, you would just restart Vim and they will all automatically install. And let me just show you how that looks. So it's going to be very similar to Visual Studio Code. Let's delete this and get use reducer. As you can see, it already knows what I want and it'll have the description in it, same as Visual Studio Code does. Let's hit enter and of course, if we break something, then it will let us know. As we can see, there's a little underline under this and it's telling us what's going wrong. We can uh, misspell a variable too. And it's going to say that this is declared but it's never read because this is not the same variable. Now we can fix that. And with this COC Vim plugin, there's actually a ton more that we can do with this. Uh, I wanna do a video in the future exploring all of the configuration options you have here because you can really do a ton of things with this plugin but that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video i just wanted to show you how to get some of my favorite features from visual studio code and bring them to vim and so i'm basically to the point where i don't really miss visual studio code that much plus you get all the great vim features as well that you know and love so if you're thinking of switching from visual studio code or you just want to add a few more nice features just to make vim more fun to use then go ahead and try some of these plugins and these keyboard shortcuts that I've shown in this video and hopefully it helps make your Vim experience a little bit better.